Looking for your fix of survival tips and tricks? Want to survive our up-and-coming demise? I'm Daniel Peterson. And I'm Cliff Rogers. Batten down the hatches and run for cover, because this is Armageddon. Thank you for joining, folks. We got a great show planned for you today. That's right, Cliff. And today's topic is identifying your apocalypse. Whether it be a violent superstorm, alien invasion, or any other horrible concoction you can imagine, something has wiped out the majority of the human race. And whatever that something is, if you don't identify and deal with it, you are 800% more likely to be killed on the early stages of the apocalypse. Knowledge is power, so today we're going to be explaining to you various ways the world could end. It's a normal morning at your residence. The sun is bright in the sky and the birds are singing. You make your morning cup of coffee, still hungover from last night's escapades. Your stomach lets out a low rumble. Images of your grandmother's mouth-watering cookies flash through your mind. You pick up your cell phone and give her a call. The line is dead. Strange. She hasn't missed a phone bill in 15 years. You let out a sigh. Maybe she's dead. Oh well, you open your cabinet and grab a cold, flavorless Pop-Tart. It's a strawberry Pop-Tart, too. The worst kind. You plop down on the couch and turn on the TV. The news is on. Being an uneducated simpleton, you try to change the channel. It's the same broadcast on every one. An old man describing a nuclear attack. Multiple nuclear attacks. Within minutes, the broadcast cuts out. Your grandma did, in fact, make cookies this morning. And they were the best damn batch of cookies she ever made in her unreasonably long life. Unfortunately, all that's left of your grandma and her baked cookies is a plume of radioactive dust. But look at the bright side. She wanted to be cremated anyway. The most important thing to remember in a nuclear holocaust is that radiation is one tricky son of a bitch. Much like the glitter off of the stripper you visit on Wednesday nights when your wife thinks you're bowling, radiation is very hard to remove. The only reliable way to measure radiation is a Geiger counter, and they don't exactly grow on trees. When scavenging for food and water, know what direction your nearest mushroom cloud is and walk in the opposite direction. Of course, if the wind is blowing your way, you're screwed anyway, so you might as well drink the irradiated water so you don't die thirsty. Another important thing to consider is that radiation, gamma radiation more precisely, can only be stopped by lead and concrete. The closer you are to the blast, the more lead and concrete you want in between you. If you're in a city that's been bombed, you may want to try seeking shelter in a subway system. Be wary, however. City rats are already scary. God only knows what radiation will do to them. It's about to happen. After an intense 18-hour stint of MMORPGing, you are finally about to hit the level cap. You have never been more excited in your life. A single enemy stands between you and your goal, notwithstanding your high cholesterol. You wipe the crumbs off your shirt, take a swig of Mountain Dew, and draw your sword. Before you can engage your foe, however, there is a flash of light and your power goes off. Without the whirring of machinery, your house is eerily quiet. It wasn't just a strange coincidence that this occurred. Everyone on your block is experiencing it. In fact, everyone on the planet is experiencing this phenomenon. 93 million miles from Earth, there is a solar superstorm. Volatile solar flares are erupting all over the sun. These solar flares are shooting electromagnetic pulses towards the Earth. Electromagnetic pulse may sound like a fancy brand of metal vibrator, but its effects are incredibly damaging to all electronics on Earth. Depending on its severity, an EMP can fry the power grids of an entire nation. Satellites in orbit would cease sending pictures of your dick to your ex-girlfriend every time you get drunk. Cars would no longer start. All long-distance communication would be cut off. In fact, everything with a battery would be at risk. Oh, and nature isn't the only thing that can generate an EMP. The United States government already has a device that can do the exact same thing. The severity of an EMP will determine whether it is an extinction event or a mild inconvenience. You will have to use your own discretion to figure that out. Regardless of what happens, you are actually going to have to go outside. Make sure you use sunscreen to keep that pasty white skin from burning. That's all we have for this week, folks. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to tune in next time for more Armageddon.